Yo gamers, I am Mike the Zorch, and this is an Inside Star Citizen edition of Zorch Reacts. And Inside Star Citizen is back. Uh, Jared is back, and they've got another video here. Uh, coming up, it is... Wear and Terror Affair. So, uh, it's been a couple of weeks, I think, since the last one that we saw. So let's get into this, and I have not watched this ahead of time. Let's get into this and see what this is about. I haven't, uh, I don't know what this one is about. So I'm watching it new just like you. Hey, y'all. Greetings from sunny United Kingdom. It's a time of change at the <laughs> moment, made the move. as I relocate from Los Angeles and our Wimslow and Frankfurt offices prepare their move into the new digs over the next coming months. That means that this quarter of ISC may be a little different, a little hmm. more run and gun than usual, recording from wherever we can week to week, whether that's our old Wimslow office you're already familiar with, sticking our heads into the currently under construction new offices here in Manchester, or hmm. even my new flat that's currently filled with half-constructed IKEA furniture. <laughs> yes, it's an exciting time for ISC and for Cloud Imperium Games as a whole. We don't have an IKEA around here, thank goodness. ...as we continue to grow. So please, uh, pardon our dust this quarter as we continue our look <laughs> inside of Star Citizen's continuing development. And we're gonna start things off this new quarter and this new year of the show with a brief look at a presentation given recently by our own Forrest Stefan to directors detailing an evolution of our wear and biome systems we want to put forward hmm. into development later this year. Okay. They have talked about this, where they want you to have ongoing repairs to your ship. You know, like, you know, car parts wear out, ship parts wear out. You have to do repairs every once in a while. Not constant repairs, not to the point, like, in Breath of the Wild, like, your shit breaks like every few minutes. No, it's it's over time. Hmm. Greetings all, Forrest here. Some of you may know this. I love playing Star Citizen. I play it on Fridays. And I was running around Microtech when I realized there was a bit of a problem there were some major inconsistencies between the characters, the weapons, and the environment in regards to the biome accumulation. Hmm. Where in Terra Bear? So I tried to come up with a solution and then I put together a presentation because before- Okay. Uh, solidify the design. What's, what is where? Biome requirements, visual consistency, standardize. In, um, intensities, uh, smart material generator solution, uh, squadron 42 PU conceptual approvals, shader expectations, UX for artists, uh, param um, parameterized values for gameplay code, hard surface wear, uh, directionality based FX, procedural FX, text scripts, batch mask old assets, batch update materials. Okay, so this might be a different kind of wear and tear that they're talking about here. Maybe this is... Oh, let's, let's watch. Before we decide to work on a feature of any kind, it is important to make certain we're all on the same page. So ah. today, I'm going to share with... Okay, I get, I get it now. Where the environment has the effect on your suit. Like, there's sand, and there's soot. Basically, the environment makes your suit dirty. You accumulate dirt on your on your uh, suit. I don't know if they'll have you have to repair your gear, 
I know that they're working on a thing where you have to repair your ship parts. With you, some of those ideas from the presentation I recently hmm. gave to CR and other directors before any of the work had started. Now, disclaimer, Jared said okay. you find it interesting. Dirt, fire so damage. But I know also that they are going to have a mechanic where you actually use those showers that are in the ships and in the, uh, in the habs. If it's not, uh, blame him. So for those of you who don't know, biome is weather and accumulation is the effect that that weather has on the materials. So if a character walks into a biome, that character's shader will reflect the weather. Hmm. Simply put, if you walk out in the rain, you're going to get wet. <laughs> yep. Right now, when you play the game, there's only a single texture handling all accumulation effects per asset. So my pitch to Chris was, let's make it procedural. How we did this was we used Substance Designer to automate any textures needed for any biome required. This okay. alleviated all labor off the artists. Hmm. So look, when you have a bunch of people creating the same thing, you're gonna have different results because we all see things differently. Doing this procedurally solves the visual inconsistencies of biome accumulation. And of course, with graphic support, it's going to be even better. All in all, the reason this is so important to me is it gives us that immersive planet side experience while playing the game mm. on my Friday nights. <laughs> <laughs> Where in biome accumulation are essential elements of right creating then. a universe that feels simultaneously So basically you're out in the snow if you're out in um a blizzard on Microtech your suit's going to build up snow if you're on Hurston and you're out in one of their dust storms you're going to get dusty you're going to get covered in dust maybe soot uh, if you're near the water, you you could pick up mud on your boots. If you go into the water, you definitely get a, a change to your... Basically, your environment's going to change what your suit's going to look like over time as long as you're exposed to that environment. That's interesting. ...alive and lived in with its expected and anticipated effects on players, buildings, and vehicles alike. And up next... The teams have been busy while we were away, so let's check in with the AI and EU sandbox teams in this week's Sprint Report. Okay. To get things started this week, let's jump into the world of AI with some Sprint updates from a variety of tasks the team is tackling for both Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Up first is the Collision Resolver. Now currently in the claustrophobic corridors of a ship or station, NPCs will often have no collision so that they can get to where they're going relatively unimpeded. But nobody wants characters just walking through other characters. So the Collision Resolver is a new system currently in development that will temporarily shrink the physics bubble of AI and change to the relevant animations, allowing them to pass through many situations they currently cannot. Hmm. In addition, missions that require AI to come down from orbit and either on that, um, I understand that they did have to increase the size of the bathrooms in a lot of ships and a lot of places so that the NPCs can actually sit in them because apparently the NPCs need more room because of those collision boxes. Also, uh, some of the, uh, in a different game, Final Fantasy XIV, when they redid a lot of the Realm Reborn dungeons, they made some of the areas a little larger for the NPCs to be able to navigate them properly. That's, uh, that's something that we saw through all the expansions, but A Realm Reborn didn't have that. Uh, well, ARR has uh, NPCs that go with you into dungeons now. It's not the trust system, it's the duty support system. There will be 
some NPC, various NPCs that will go with you into those dungeons now. So the whole thing's basically soloable all the way through down to, down to Endwalker, except for certain uh, content where you have to have a party. But they had to make some areas larger so that the NPCs could actually, actually navigate that. And in Star Citizen, they had to do the same thing with certain places like the bathrooms had to be larger so the NPCs could interact with them. Either deliver or pick up the player or goods often followed the terrain just a little too precisely, bouncing hmm. needlessly up and down over obstacles far, far below it, making it look, well, just janky as heck. So hmm. the AI flight path system is getting new features that allow for both local and look ahead searches to determine not just safe altitudes that they can reach their destinations with, but also fly a more smooth and natural motion than ever before. This Already? system can also potentially be used to allow NPCs to determine their own landing spots using many of the same size and shape and availability judgments the players themselves have to use. Hmm. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. The team is also working to improve downstate reactions. As you can see here, where a group of actors discovers a fallen body. In this case, they might just rush over, investigate, and then fan out a scene here. Or perhaps they'll slowly approach with one person investigating while another stays behind to provide cover. Hmm. And for anyone that's ever done the underground facility mission, improved response times for when their investigation of a fallen comrade is interrupted by an uncautious player. The <laughs> AI content folks have also recently completed a sprint on a variety of usables such as these vending machines, ah. where AI will ponder their selections, use their Moby Glass to complete the purchase, and even get frustrated when it doesn't work out. <laughs> And then you can see here the entire carbonated refreshment flow behavior, where we get our drink, return to our table, consume our drink, and then dispose of it in the receptacle where it can be properly despawned to preserve server performance. Yay. <laughs> and before we move on, let's go back to that failed reaction from before. You know, a lot of people don't think that this is stuff is important. Well, if you consider what kind of game this is going to be, where they, they're taking the approach of simulate everything. They're going for realism in this. I mean, I mean as real as you can get making a sci-fi game in space. But they're going for realism here. And so they want to create that immersion level. And the way you create that is you make it where the NPCs don't look like stiff, just sitting there not doing anything NPCs. They're actually going to be walking around doing things. They're going to look like they're players walking around doing stuff. That's their aim with all this, with all this AI work, is to make these NPCs look very intelligent so that when you're walking around, you're not just seeing NPCs just doing the stuff that you normally see NPCs do in other games. They're going to try and make it to where this game feels lived in. Because the NPCs are going to outnumber the players drastically. There's going to be a lot of players. There are a lot of players. But the NPCs are going to outnumber the players. And they want the world to look... They want the world to look uh, lived in. And see if we can really get inside the head of our AI in this exact moment. All right, let's see. Think I'll go for a peach flavor today. Make my payment. Oi, what gives? Hello, Mr. Machine Man. Oi, bruv, give me my peaches and prawn delight. <laughs> that ain't right. Hey, wakey wakey. I ain't got time for this. Well, maybe just a few minutes more. Hello. Boy, this thing is really, uh, really fastened in there, isn't it? Doesn't move an inch. 
<laughs> you know, back in my day, we used to move these things all over the stain system. You're lucky you're not physicalized, bruv. All right, moving along. <laughs> Let's check in with the EU sandbox team and their continuing work fleshing out the derelict outposts to mm. be found on the surface of Pyro's planets and moons. What you're seeing here is a white box traversal test, the kind of work often done by level designers to flesh out aspects of the intended gameplay experience before artists come in and finish it out visually. And as you can see here, these derelict outposts are intended to be canvases to a variety of mission types and emergent opportunities, storytelling yeah. possibilities, and given that it's pyro, maybe even some unavoidable PVP firefight eventualities. <laughs> yeah. And in addition to working on the colonialism outposts, the EU Sandbox 01 team are also exploring new gameplay opportunities out in the farthest reaches of the upcoming pyro system. What you're seeing here is some early pre-production work on larger scale points of interest to be explored throughout the system. That's cool utilizing looking. debris from capital ships or in this case, defunct, damaged or destroyed space stations from days gone past. Hmm. The upcoming pyro system is intended to be rich with a history more violent and conflicted than the Stanton system you're already familiar with. And without the efforts of mega corporations like Art Corp, Hurston, Microtech, and Crusader keeping things relatively nice and tidy. That means a variety of husks, relics, and otherwise aging locations to discover from the nearly 500 years of space travel and exploration that have occurred in this lawless frontier. This also includes variations with pre-existing pathing solutions intended to guide players safely to their destination through a damaging or otherwise dangerous array of obstacles, not unlike the famous coil from Squadron 42. Hmm. Yeah, they may be lawless out here, but nobody wants to die unnecessarily speeding through an array of micro asteroids or by losing hull integrity to corrosive agents and the like when hmm. making their way from one outpost to another. Yeah, they're outlaws, but nobody likes a bad road trip. And beyond just being a cool place to explore visually, it's important these points of interest provide gameplay opportunities to players within. As the mission system spawns its myriad of mission types to explore, collect, attack, rescue, salvage, repair, and more, we also want to create environments that provide compelling reasons to leave your larger ships at the outskirts, safe from the dangers within, where a smaller craft would be perhaps a more tactically sound solution. And if you're asking yourself, well, what the heck is this place? We're going to talk more <laughs> about what you're seeing here later in the All year. Ready then. So what did we learn this week? Well, we got a glimpse at the earliest stages of feature iteration with a look at the exact same kinds of presentations given internally to directors to scope out work for the months ahead that the AI team continues to push the everyday behaviors of NPCs in naturalistic ways in their continuing efforts to create an immersive experience for all players. Yep. And that, that traveling why they made it looks to get just a little more involved and potentially a lot more dangerous as we continue along with our path to Pyro. That does it for us but this they're, week. They're really Inside pushing Star Pyro. Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. <laughs> all righty then. So they are really pushing for pyro because they they really want to get pyro out this year so we saw uh where they will have your suits will be affected by the environment so you'll have snow and rain water dripping off of your uh your armor mud soot if you're like if you're in the more um say polluted regions of Hurston you'll have soot on your suit or maybe you're on one of the hot planets of Pyro because you're going to have that so uh, that is you know some people may think oh none of that's important for gameplay but it it's important for the game's immersion the NPCs the their behaviors that's important for immersion 
and we got to see a little bit of pyro and they are really pushing for that really pushing to get pyro out the door and i really do hope that they do get pyro out the door they need to get another star system into the game i know they're they're really working hard on 317 right now to get that out and that's going to be a huge update to the game because that brings so much stuff that brings a completely new profession into the game for you know uh, selling uh, fuel the fuel pr um, profession and it brings a new ship for cargo and we're going to be getting another we're actually we actually talked about getting the expanse which is the refinery ship which further builds onto the mining profession in the game and there'll be several different kinds of professions in star citizen um progressing right now there's bounty hunter there is trader there is miner uh, there is medical gameplay so there's going to be a lot more than that there are ships that have functionality for gameplay that doesn't exist in the game yet that is going to be added over time anyway that has been uh, the inside star citizen or spring the first one after their break after their move to the uk so i have been mike the zorch thanks for watching uh if you like this video consider subscribing click that bell icon so you will get notifications of any new videos also don't forget to visit the gamers bay community on miwi miwi is a privacy focused social media platform that doesn't censor doesn't sell your data doesn't run ads we're a, a growing community that migrated there from google plus when google plus was shut down anyway again I'm Mike DeZorch, and I will see you in the next Inside Star Citizen.